the city of Tarpon Springs on Tuesday, April 2nd, <clears throat> 2024 at 6.30 p.m. Roll call, please. Mayor Vadikiotis. Here. Vice Mayor Eisner. Here. Commissioner Koulias. Here. Commissioner Koulianis. Here. Commissioner DiDonato. Here. Um, this evening's uh, invocation will be given by Reverend Janet Tunnell of All Saints Episcopal Church. If we can stand and remain standing after the invocation and pledge allegiance to the flag. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, send down upon those who hold office in the city of Tarpon Springs the spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice that with steadfast purpose they may faithfully serve in their office to promote the well-being of all people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here. Um, I've got one brief uh, announcement to make. Uh, Mr. Daniel Lewis, our city attorney, will be filling in for uh, Ms. Regina Kardash, who's no longer with us for reasons unrelated to the city. Uh, welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we have two proclamations this evening. If I could ask uh, Mr. Jamie Taylor to come forward for the first. April is um, a month for many holidays and observations, and this proclamation is for Volunteer Appreciation months, Month. Whereas the month of April has been designated nationally as Volunteer Appreciation Month to recognize the hard work, dedication, and passion of volunteers and national service members throughout our nation, and whereas the Board of Commissioners believe that government alone cannot meet all our city needs, so we partner with businesses, faith-based organizations, nonprofit organizations, foundations, and individuals who serve in city government and our community to make a difference. And whereas volunteers enhance the quality of life in Tarpon Springs by volunteering for city advisory boards, schools, places of worship, hospitals, youth groups, and with other organizations that benefit our community. And whereas it is fitting to honor the many individuals who lend their time, skill, and efforts to making our community a better place by recognizing our valued volunteers. And whereas the city is committed to encouraging volunteerism among its employees, citizens, partners, businesses, and organizations, and thanks all volunteers for, for their dedicated service. Now, therefore, I coast as Vatikiotis, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida, do hereby proclaim the month of April 2024 as Volunteer Appreciation Month. Congratulations, Jim. Thanks, sir. Um, thank you. Um, Jamie is in our Recreations Department, and if you go to some of our events, such as the uh, Easter Egg Hunt and, and uh, all these other really city events that are not the big draws of downtown events, um, you'll see the number of volunteers, parents, our own employees that volunteer and they're out there with a great deal of dedication and enthusiasm. Jamie, would you like to say anything? Yes, sir. Honorable Mayor, Board of Commissioners, thank you again. I uh, just want to echo the sentiment of appreciation for volunteers within the city, um, whether it's advisory boards, help at Sunset Beach uh, concert series that we have with parking, the special events. Um, it really makes a big difference and allows uh, the sense of community for, for everything we're doing and also um, allows us to put on safe and enjoyable events. So um, glad that it's being honored and appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Yes, sir. The next proclamation is for National Library Week. If I could ask Ms. Carrie Rupakalvis to come forward. She's our head librarian. And uh, Carrie, you can invite whoever you'd like up here as well. 
Good evening. Hi. I have to take a deep breath before all of these. <laughs> Whereas libraries have long served as trusted institutions for all members of the community, regardless of race, ethnicity, creed, ability, gender identity, and social economic status, and whereas libraries strive to develop and maintain programs and collections that are diverse as the populations they serve and ensure equity of all for access, whereas the libraries adapt to the ever-changing needs of their communities, continually expanding their collections, services, and partnerships, and whereas libraries play a critical role in communities by providing internet and technology access, literacy skills, and support for job seekers, small businesses, and entrepreneurs. And whereas during National Library Week, we celebrate the many ways that libraries enrich our communities and support efforts to ensure that they remain an inclusive space for learning and empowerment for all of us. And whereas it is most appropriate to recognize the hard work, dedication, and expertise of our library director, Carrie Rupkalvis, and library staff, including Julie Baker, Denise Manning, Salvatore Miranda, and Nancy Mitchum, who advocate and work for the improvement of library services for all our residents. We extend appreciation for the enormous value we receive every day from all our library staff. Now, therefore, I co-stess Vati Kyotis by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Tarpon Springs to hereby proclaim the week of April 7th through 13th, 2024 as National Library Week. And remember, there is nothing greater than exploring a library and a book. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Carrie, yes. the microphone's on. Well, thank you very much. Um, thank you, Mayor and Commissioners, for this uh, proclamation for National Library Week. We have a lot of exciting things going on at the library. To kick off National Library Week, we're having a solar eclipse watch party on uh, Monday, April 8th. And um, we have uh, free solar eclipse classes through a grant program with the uh, Space Science Institute's uh, Library Star Network. Uh, so we'll be giving out Eclipse classes that Monday from 1 to 4, and then also the Saturday previous, uh, April 6. Um, and then uh, ending National Library Week, we have a special program with Harbin Springs High School, their uh, Tri-M Music Honor Society. Um, and Nancy, our <laughs> head of youth services, is, is showing one of our uh, musical instruments. The uh, bazooki we have uh, available for checkout. So the students will be talking about their instruments. This is Saturday the 13th from 2 to 4, encouraging uh, children and other students to get involved in learning to play a musical instrument. And we'll have new additions to our library musical instrument collection available for checkout at the event. Um, and then at the end of the month, um, we have a... a Earth Week, because our Earth Day is April 22nd, uh, so that Monday we'll start our display. It'll be on display all week long to that Saturday. And Julie has um, the uh, Grab and Grow kits sponsored by the Friends of the Library that we'll be giving away um, all, all that last week of April for Earth Week. Uh, and then we'll also have information about sustainability resources at the library and then through different city departments. Um, so uh, visit tarpenlibrary.org for all of our information on our different activities. Thank you. Well, um, I, I'll, I'll go ahead, and I don't want to steal um, Patricia's thunder with the library board report, but um, one of the most exciting things we're super happy about um, with the library is uh, we got a half a million dollar grant from the state, um, and we have um, half a million dollars um, from city funds, 100,000 donations, and 400,000 impact funds. So we're doing a wonderful library renovation project. So stay tuned for that towards the end of this year. We hope to get construction underway and um, going to have wonderful new things coming for the library. And uh, Patricia will be mentioning some more of that in our library board report. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any uh, <clears throat> residents that would like to make comments on any either of the two presentations that we just made? If not, uh, uh, Mr. Jump, I should ask, are there any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to make a public comment on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk.
and we do not have any raised hands at okay. this time. Are, are there any commissioners that would like to make any comments? Mr. Uh, Vice Mayor uh, Eisner, go ahead. I'm going to walk around back. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Well, one thing I wanted to say is uh, I'm at most of the uh, volunteer um, events that go on. And Jamie, thank you very much for all your hard work, you and everybody. I, 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 I get there and I just can't believe the amount of energy that you guys put out. And, you know, by the time I leave, you're doing all cleanup and whatnot. And, you know, these are, those are the times that, you know, I really want to thank you because it's a lot to do. It's a lot to set up. Uh, that Easter egg extravaganza was amazing. So um, thank you for what you do and uh, just appreciate you every single day. The other thing is, Carrie, you've got to show a little bit more enthusiasm and <laughs> happiness in your pep in your step. Um, I've known you many years. I'm just kidding. Um, you, you do an amazing job. Every time I see you, you have that greeting, that smile. Uh, I don't think there's a job around that you don't love more than what you do. And it, it oozes out with every time I see you. So thank you for what you do. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other commissioner? Okay. Let's move on with the agenda. We have two uh, special presentations. The first is the Library Board Annual Report. City Manager Forrest. Carrie, if you'd like to come forward and bring, bring Mr. Dad and give the report. Yes. Uh, Patricia Haddad, our Library Board Chair, is going to be giving the report. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, City Officers, and Library Members. Um, Ms. Haddad, if you could swing the microphone towards you. A little you closer. A little yes, I meant to do that. Thank you. You're welcome. My name is Patricia Haddad, current chair of the board and a former librarian. Our library board is a delightful group to work with and Carrie does an amazing job as our director <laughs> as everybody knows and her assistant Julie, Julie is always helpful oh thank you library board activities each year I personally love participating in the city's Christmas parade and handing out children's books that are donated by the friends of the library. Many times grandmothers will ask for a couple of books to take home to grandchildren and that's so special. This year our float was, decora was decorated by You Can Draw Students taught by library employee Maria. And you can see the octopus on the left side of the float and the snowman on the cab of the truck on the right. A couple of years ago, our police chief walked along with the library <laughs> float, and it looked like you were enjoying yourself interacting with people, with children and adults. Thank you for that. Congratulations. Let's get this on there. OK. Congratulations to Friends of the Library on their 60th anniversary. The Friends are extremely important for the library. They donated $40,000 to the library in 2023, and we thank you for that. 
it's hard to believe that almost $14,000 was raised by their used bookstore in the library, run by volunteers, selling most of their books for under a dollar and some even for less. And all of those proceeds go to the library. There are youth and family programs. The theme for the library mini golf program, top left, was Alice in Wonderland, and decorations were created by the library staff. The tree they made was phenomenal. You can see that up there. Librarian Nancy is pictured on the bottom left reading to students from Tarpon Elementary. And on the bottom right is a Tarpon Springs Police Department youth program that is very well attended and they love the police dog. For adult programs, author Craig Pittman spoke about his book on efforts to save the Florida Panther as part of a Florida Talks grant that the library received from Florida Humanities. And on top right, library patrons enjoyed a lively program on black music in America, parts one and two, on separate days starting way back with Ella Fitzgerald, and she's my favorite, all the way through to Stevie Wonder, and who doesn't love Stevie Wonder? <laughs> For community outreach, the library participates in several city events, including Egg Stravaganza, the Halloween Bash, and Snow Place Like Tarpon. The library also does outreach with local schools and Head Start. Library e-resources are available 24-7 from your home or office. They include e-books and digital audio books. I use Libby because I enjoy reading audible books for two book groups that I'm in. Other e-resources are streaming music and videos and databases for genealogy, business, and language learning. Okay, special collections are available for checkout. Well, some of you may be wondering why I set up um, all of these little characters here on the um, podium. Um, and you will see they are Tonys. These characters um, play stories that have uh, songs and, and much more. And we have a number of characters that can be checked out separately or with the Tony box, which is here. It's speakers, and in order to turn it on, you just squeeze these two little ears that are cat ears. And... Um, I can take um, the orchestra conductor and put him on here. And it's a screen-free way of offering uh, the experience for children to learn and enjoy stories and information. I can also put the astronaut here. <laughs> so, um, adults enjoy these too. Um, the board went crazy over them when Nancy, our librarian, <laughs> introduced them to us a few months ago. And then there are the uh, seed catalogs and the ever popular musical instruments and hobby kits. It's fun and free to check out a museum pass. Pinellas Public Library Cooperatives. Oops. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, I didn't put that on. Okay. There we go. Museum passes. Um, okay. The Pinellas Public Library Cooperatives Museum Pass Program offers free admission to Tampa Bay Museums 
by checking out one of the available passes with your library card. Most of them are for two adults and up to three children. So for a couple upcoming events, now that we have the Heritage Museum and Safford House join, joining the Museum Pass program, that should encourage more people to come to Tarpon Springs and to um, visit our museums and enjoy our beautiful city. A couple of years ago, the library board helped design the library survey, which revealed the community's ideas to enhance the library with new study rooms, more quiet reading spaces, and expanded adult and teen space. The board will continue working with administ library administration on design and plans for the construction project. And of course, that was mentioned already. Um, we have a $1 million grant. It was funded by a $5,000 grant from the state, matching funds of $100,000 in donations and a $400,000 impact fund from the city. Thank you for that. Most libraries, including ours, have seen a decrease in the use of physical materials such as books, DVDs and <laughs> thank you and um, books on CD and an increase in the use of e-resources such as digital audio books and online magazines. The mission of the Tarpon Springs Public Library continues to be to fulfill to provide excellent library and information services to fulfill the needs of users, to enhance the quality of life, and to be a focal point of the community. And the flower petals show 2023 statistics of library use. Well, I would like to thank you all for your time. And if you would like any additional copies of this report, it's available on the library website. Thank you, Ms. Sadan. Um, are there any public comments on this presentation? <clears throat> Mr. Geddes. I'll make a quick comment. David uh, Ballard Geddes, Jr., Georgia Avenue, Palm Harbor. When I was a child, I didn't read much. As I've grown up, I've gravitated toward reading, and I read a lot today. And I realize the more that I read, my mind opens up with a new set of eyes. Not just, you know, seeing from my eyes, but my mind itself is capable of seeing things it wasn't able to see before. Only through reading, not through television, not through internet, but reading. Reading allows my mind to open up its eyes and, and, and awaken to a, a, uh, a different <coughs> viewpoint, a different way to see things. And I'm, I'm grateful for the library and all that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. And thank you for mentioning that because as a librarian, um, some people would say, oh, they're not reading the right thing or comic books are, aren't really good reading. Anything that can be read is good reading. So thank you for your comments. Um, are there any other comments, public comments? Um, Mr. Jump, are there any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to make a public comment, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay, let me just start out uh, with my comment. I'll go to any of the other commissioners that have got comments. Um, today's April 2nd. Um, I'm going to say this because I won't be here next year at this time. April 1st is the day I give this to someone else. So um, there's two buildings in town. Uh, one is the public safety building. The other is the library that really... Um, kind of stir my emotions whenever I pass them. Uh, of course, we've got City Hall. This was a high school, and I honestly have better memories of this building as the high school and junior high when I was here than I do as, uh, as uh, serving the, the residents as an elected official or even as city manager. But, but it's there, and it's in my memory. Uh, same way with the uh, Cultural Center. It, uh, used to, as a kid, I used to go in there as a Boy Scout and various activities in there. 
but that's part of my memory. The two things that are not memory, but are living memories and creating memories are the public safety building and the uh, Tarpon Springs Library. The public safety building is, I, it, it, whenever I go in there for a um, uh, promotion ceremony or welcoming new uh, police officers or other dignitaries to the police station, it all, always, made, it's, a, it's a very safe place. Uh, you get that feeling, that sense of feeling. And the, the other thing is it works, it, it operates 24 seven. It's always there. So you know someone's always at the public safety building over seeing the, uh, the residents of Tarpon Springs. The library is a little different. Um, our city manager, when we put that there 25 years ago, I, I know the fr former uh, mayor Protos was mayor at the time, and I know uh, uh, Commissioner Di Donato at the time was still commissioner and was part of that effort too. Um, and so uh, it's different. It doesn't stay open 24 seven, but when you go by it and it's closed, you get the sense that it's asleep. And during the day when it's open, you know, it's, it's teaching, it's educating, not just children, but people. And that's a very, very honorable um, activity to have here in Tarpon Springs, besides the schools. And um, I know that the internet has created, uh, uh, has changed the horizons of learning and education to the world, rather than what you have simply on the shelves. So um, it's a living entity and, I, and, and we have to take care of that. And I very much appreciate all of the work that our library staff has. We've had an outstanding staff for a long time. We've had an outstanding library board. I know at least one of you, this is your passion in life. You shared that with me and I very much appreciate that. And also the Friends of the Library, of which my wife was a part of and, and, and some of you were part of the library, uh, Friends of the Library as well. So I wanna personally thank you and, and to continue on the hard work. I know the, um, uh, the million dollars, the $500,000 grant, the million dollars um, will give us a start and we'll do everything obviously that we wanna do. Hopefully some time in the future, we'll see a big expansion of the library. Um, and and I, I know it's gonna be needed. Um, I'm hoping our population in Tarpon doesn't grow too much, but I think with all the activities that are uh, coming, you're going to need different spaces for different things to do. So thank you very much and um, continue the hard work. Thank you. Um, what other commissioners would uh, Vice Mayor Eisner? <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. You know, it's an interesting thing. When I first moved down here, I came down for um, reasons that I didn't know exist. And when I get to see, I know most, or if not all, of the people on the li library board and friends of the library. Um, I see how much hard work you put into what you do, and I take my hat off to you, and uh, I hope to measure up to you someday and try to work as hard as I see you guys do. Um, I know just how committed you are, and I want to thank you for that. Um, the library is just an invaluable uh, asset to the town, and uh, you are all what makes me love Tarpon Springs because I know your heart and soul is in it. And uh, you can only be helping to educate um, the, the people here. And th what you do is just fantastic. So I do want to thank you for what you do and appreciate it. it's your night. It's your honor. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Uh, Commissioner Cuyas. Uh, I want to thank Mrs. Haddad for the presentation. It was a, a great presentation. And thank you for everything you do, as well as uh, Mrs. Rob Calvis and staff and the library board and friends of the library. It, it all comes together in helping out this community and um, looking forward to the renovation to see how that's going to uh, come about as well as uh, it's nice to hear about those museum passes. I think anything we can do to get people out and about in the Tampa Bay area to see the many uh, museums that are around that are just uh, world class themselves. So uh, as well as us being involved with that museum pass is great. Um, very happy to see all those attendance and numbers and programs that uh, you all brought up there. And uh, some of my best memories is uh, summer camps where we'd be able to rent out the hall and watch some movies over there in that first entrance room. So uh, I had some great times there. And uh, it's challenging now to get kids the, the electric or the e-books as well as the physical books growing up. And, uh, you know, I grew up with a physical book in my hand and one of the last to do that before this technology. And so it's... Uh, it's difficult for them, but all the different programs you guys put together keep them interested in it. So thank you. Okay. Commissioner Di Donato. 
I, I don't often repeat things that have already been said, but I, I must commend both the staff led by Kerry and, and all the members of the board over the years. I've known many. Uh, there's not a more dedicated civilian board in, in Tarpon Springs. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, I do have a little history along with Mayor Protos. And when we had to make the tough decision to move the library, which was not very popular because everybody loved the beauty of, of the library in, in Craig Park. However, here we are already talking about an extension. It, it wouldn't have worked where it was. So we had to move it, and I think it's turned out very, very well. So thank you all. Commissioner Koulianis. Yes. <clears throat> I have a, a particularly unique feeling about the library. Um, and when I drive by it, when I go to the corner of Lemon and Safford, I always have a smile on my face. Um, I came on as the treasurer of the Friends of the Library in December of 1999. And the Friends had uh, received a large bequest from Saul Pesca. Uh, it was about 400, I think it was close to 400,000. I was having this conversation with Carrie. And it grew. It, they had made a decision, the board then had made a decision to invest that money in a stock portfolio, and it had grown. Um, and so when I became the treasurer of the Friends in December of 99, I, I, was un, I, I was uncomfortable overseeing a stock portfolio uh, for a small organization like the Friends. So we sold all the stocks in January of 2000, we sold every stock. The money had grown, I think, to about 750. And then in March of 2020, the dot com crash came. The market collapsed. We were out of the market. And we took <clears throat> that money. And later, they bought the building they bought. So, Am I bragging? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and do I take some uh, consolation when I drive by that building? You, you, bet, you bet I do. So I have a special place in my heart for the friends and for the library. So thank you. Uh, thank you all very much for being here this evening. Uh, our next presentation is the property insurance update. I'll bring Ms. Niffin forward to introduce our guest to give this presentation. Mayor, Board of Commissioners, Jane Niffin, HR Director. Um, last fall, we had a very significant increase in our renewal of the risk management program um, for a number of reasons. Um, you had asked us to do a mid-year update, so this is why we're here tonight, to give you a, a, an update on, on what is happening in the insurance industry. You don't need me to tell you that it's been kind of a catastrophic year uh, several years lately for, for uh, uh, insurance in Florida. We are a very high risk area. Um, the, the companies that really set the rates are, are the reinsurers, the big companies like AIG, um, Lloyds of London, et cetera. They are the ones who set the rates for the smaller insurance companies which purchase reinsurance from them. Uh, they have become a little less risk tolerant they, the, their capacity, excuse me, <clears throat> their capacity has, has diminished, but the demand continues to grow. So we, we all know the supply and demand uh, curve, which puts a great deal of pressure on our uh, premiums. Secondly, we have the dreaded inflation. And nobody here can tell me that they haven't been somewhere to purchase something and had, a, had sticker shock. Um, we currently have a, a re replacement cost on our property policy. So anytime there's inflation, which we've, we have experienced uh, in the last couple of years, 
Uh, we have an increase in labor costs, material costs, operational costs, which again translates into much higher premiums. Um, again, we have replacement costs versus actual cash value or depreciated cost. Uh, lastly, I'd want to mention the, the business about uh, adding assets. The city has continued to grow. We have added assets to our schedule. We also had an appraisal which uh, has increased our property values together with the added assets by about 36%, which is a significant increase. Um, to that end, uh, the city has formed a committee composed of finance department, HR risk management, um, fire uh, emergency, uh, emergency management, um, public works and public uh, services. Uh, we are going, currently going through the property schedule to see if there's anything that uh, could possibly re be removed without any significant uh, effect. Uh, unfortunately, the small, the small items don't translate into significant decreases. But the thing you have to watch for is uh, larger items uh, which could be removed may leave the city exposed to uninsured uh, property during a catastrophic event. The other thing is, the rate, if you raise deductibles, we will spend more out-of-pocket out of costs. But tonight, I've, I'm, I want to introduce uh, Lindsay Johansson, who is our uh, FMIT rep for the Florida West Coast. She's going to go through a presentation about, about our insurance and give us, maybe give us some options uh, and definitely answer your questions. Lindsay? Let me, uh, let me uh, go. Come on forward. I, I just want to ask the city manager a quick question. Are you looking for any direction out of this tonight, or just just a presentation? No, just a, this is a presentation that you request to be brought well, back. So choices just, and options would come at a later. That'd come time. at a later time. Okay, thank you. Hi everyone, thank you for having me tonight. Um, thank you for that introduction, Jane. Um, I'm Lindsay Johannesson. I am your account executive for the West Coast of Florida with the FMIT. And I'm also here with Trevor Reshney. Um, he is our risk and safety consultant for the West Coast. So he is your direct risk and safety advisor. Um, so as you all probably recall, um, I was here around renewal time to kind of go through a lot of the details that um, are part of your renewal and were factored into the increase that um, Jane is referring to. So I'm going to go through this quickly and then I'll open it for questions. Um, but we do have um, some ideas and strategies to help reduce costs, which I know is the, kind of the priority. Um, so we'll go through that. Um, the Florida League of Cities was uh, created back in 1922. So we have been around for quite a while um, providing specifically municipal governments with insurance. Um, we started as a workers' comp only and then expanded into the other lines um, that you now know as our package program, the property, general liability, auto, and workers' comp. It's so just a little bit um, of our market landscape um, and the percentage of cities that currently work with the FMIT. Um, we are the largest and oldest trust in the state um, and have a large surplus, um, the largest of the three pools that you would most likely go to here in the state. So these are some of the things that Jane was alluding to. Um, these are the pressures that were on the US commercial insurance market this year and specifically affected our renewals. Um, so this is Florida's the most cap prone zone in the world um, because of the amount of value of property that exists here. Um, so obviously on a catastrophic model, we all, especially coastal cities are going to um, have significant impact for reinsurance costs and for increased weather events. Um, so we do have increased building costs, rising property values, um, the reinsurance costs, and the rest that you see there. Um, and I would also note that you all had an asset survey completed, which Jane also mentioned, which resulted in about a 36% increase in your total insurable value. So what that um, asset survey tells us is that for the current assets, uh, buildings that you all have on, our, on your schedule, um, those have increased. And then we also have a second piece of that asset survey that identifies newly identified properties. Um, so there are some on there as well. So I know that you have um, a group that's going to review that actual property asset survey and then go through there and decide which may be able to be taken off because 
if there were a storm, you wouldn't want to replace that building. Or on the opposite end, it's a brand new building, it's um, weatherized, and it would probably fare very well. So you're willing to take the chance to take that off the schedule and, and not insure it, pay to insure it. Um, so that is definitely a risk, um, you know, a risk reward thing to do. Um, definitely look at that property schedule and decide what you think needs to potentially come off. Um, so this is a little bit more of a breakdown for your renewal. So you can see the property TIV, the 36% increase in values. Um, and then the mod, which is part of your workers comp rating. You actually had a little bit of a decrease in that. So that means less workplace injuries um, last year. The city payrolls were up about 15%. And that is the largest rating factor involved in the general liability. Um, so your slip and fall claims, um, property damage and bodily injury lawsuits that will come to the city. Um, so you did have a bit of an increase in the payroll, which is to be expected. Um, the auto liability, you did have a significant increase in um, losses this year for the auto. Um, auto is a very tough line in the state of Florida. We are, unfortunately, our state has the highest uninsured and underinsured drivers in the country. So we do face either in an accident, the other party that's at fault does not have enough limits or in some cases does not have insurance at all. Um, so auto liability is an expensive line. It's also getting more expensive to replace car parts um, as vehicles technology, um, you know, there's more technology in vehicles, they're more expensive to repair. All this to say you had about a 47% increase. That is mainly driven by the property. So the best way to offset costs, I would say, is to attack the most expensive line of coverage, which for you all is definitely the property. Um, we did offer these options here. These are the named storm deductibles. So this is specifically for a named storm. We have another separate deductible on our property policy called the AOP deductible, which is for like fire, vandalism, things that aren't related to a named hurricane. So you all are currently at a 5% named storm deductible, which you can see the annual premium there is 777,000. And then as you go down the 7.5 and the 10% options, you can see the savings um, that, that are there. So those are definitely helpful. Um, keep in mind that that percentage deductible is gonna be a percentage of the total loss at, at the time of loss um, on whatever building is, uh, is affected. So those are options to look at. Um, the other option, which I would not necessarily recommend, most cities will stair step into cost savings, um, which is a loss limit. So for some select cities, we have offered a loss limit, which is basically to say you just buy a limit. So right now you're covered up to $150 million per loss on any, on any loss at all. Um, if you took a loss limit, you could basically say, I wanna buy insurance up to $10 million, that's it. We'll buy a $10 million policy or we'll buy a $30 million policy and then that's where it stops and then the city assumes all costs above that. So the insurance company would pay up to that limit. Um, your guide for making that determination would be something called an AAL. Um, which is your average annual loss. So that's something that's run through our catastrophic modeling program, which could project out to you what is your most likely scenario of a loss in a one in 100 year situation, a one in 200 year situation. Um, and that data would be what you would base your loss limit purchase at. So if it was um, a one in 100 year storm for you all would be a $60 million loss. Maybe you only wanna buy up to 60 million. Um, but that, that is an option. We would have to model it out and we would be able to offer that as we approach renewal. Um, that is a little bit more of a risk um, compared to just taking a deductible. So those are some options to consider. And I'm gonna let um, Trevor come up and talk a little bit about the risk and safety um, specific to the city of Tarpon Springs. Good evening, commission and mayor, guests. Uh, my name is Trevor, and with the, with the FMIT, I'm a safety and risk consultant. Um, it's kind of hard to read, but this is all the stuff that I do for free, no cost. Basically, training, inspections, traditional safety type stuff. Um, I just want to give you a summary of what I've done for the city in the last couple of years. I've inspected every inch of every facility at least once, and sometimes, well, with the playgrounds, twice. So I've, I've been through all your facilities, all your parks looking for hazards, providing reports and, and photos of, of issues. So we're trying to get ahead of the curve on the claims with that. Um, this year, I also provided 
defensive driver training, try to tackle your guys' issue, well, everyone's issue when it comes to driving and the, uh, you know, the vehicle costs. So I trained about 120 of your employees on defensive driving this year. Um, and then most importantly, I, I know the fire department is here, uh, we provided an assessment, an accreditation assessment for the fire department, and they actually passed uh, with a 93%, I believe. So, you know, congratulations to them for that. That was, that was excellent. You guys did really well. And that's part of our Safety Excellence Initiative program um, that we've been, we rolled, been rolling out the last few years, um, starting with police and fire. We'll get you guys next. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, of course, doing the city operations as well. So those are all some of the things I've done in the last couple of years for the city to help reduce those costs. Lindsay? Awesome. Um, also, I'm sure it's obvious, um, but we are part of the Florida League of Cities. Um, and as you know, the Florida League of Cities does do um, a tremendous service to our cities in Tallahassee, as well as at the um, national level on Capitol Hill and here in Tallahassee during session, um, defending cities home rule and trying to make sure that cities are heard up at that level. Um, and we have a whole legislative team that works on that. So um, with all of that, I will open it up for questions relating to the insurance. Okay, let me go to the public first and see if there's any comments from the public. Are there any public comments on this item? Uh, Mr. Jump, are there any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to make a public comment on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. Yeah, we do not have raised hands at this time. Um, thank you. Vice Mayor Eisner, you've got your light on. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. Um, so you currently, that we have a 5% deductible now? Is that what I heard? Correct. Yes, yes? Correct. Okay. Um, so adding another two and a half percent is only another $80,000. So that would be a savings of $80,000 from what I see. Yes. Um, but we're trading off, I don't know what the total is. is. Is it $150 million that we could lose if it was all wiped out? Is that what, is what I'm supposed to be comparing it to? So your, your TIV for the city, um, let me go back to that slide. TIV for the city is 118 million. Um, so I, I did misspeak. We can cover up to 150 million for those that exceed the 150 million in TIV. We, if a city is under the 150 million TIV, which I kind of assumed that you were, but you guys are actually 118 million in TIV. We cover you for that full TIV. So we're only covered for 118. Per claim. Right. Yeah. Um, would we be able to, you know, is there prices that we would be able to get for what it would be? To have 100 million coverage, to have 75 million coverage. Right. That's the loss limit that I was referring to. So, yes, we could. Okay. Because, I mean, we need to be able to make a comparison of what's worth the risk and what's not. Um, the deductible itself is not a big deal. Do they also give you catastrophic um, deductibles? So, what we'd be willing, because we have a, uh, I think we have a $20 million reserve for uh, in case of catastrophic am, am I correct on that or I know you're looking at me like do we have a reserve we have a reserve you know between eight and nine million yeah. sorry okay so we have a reserve so if worst case scenario happened would we then you know we, where would we could we go with could we go to 20 percent what when does it get substantially less because eighty thousand dollars is a lot for a person, but for a city, it's not really a lot to save. So, I mean, these are the deductible options. The highest we're going to go is a 10% on name storm deductible. Okay. And, and that would be your annual premium related to that. And that percentage, that percentage deductible is of the total loss at the time. Mm -hmm. So you'd be probably somewhere around um, a million dollars if because we have, I think we're at, what'd you say, there was 118, 118 million we have? You're at 118 million in TIV. So we would be then liable for about a 10% for about a million dollars. If you had a total loss at one time. Right. Okay. Correct, which is pretty much I unlikely. I, I, yeah, I'm yeah. just giving worst case scenario. Um, what is the, um, the estimated effect of damage that we could have in a, Hurricane, you had, I mean, you had to 
go around and survey these things. Um, our, most of our uh, buildings would take a 50% damage, a 75% damage, you know, like have a wind, a wind evaluation. Yeah, we don't, so what we do is we do catastrophic modeling and it's based on the region or the zone, in this case, the city and how it's situated on the coast. Um, it'll run a cat model of different varying, you know, cat one up to a cat five hurricane. And then it will project out a, a potential loss scenario. So what would be the max loss that you would have in a cat two hurricane? Um, and that would be, I mean, there's a ton of data that get put, gets put into that model, including the building and construction type, the, um, you know, the way it's facing the coast, um, how it uh, would be affected by wind patterns. So it's pretty complex. Um, we can give you that data. Uh, we run this as we get closer to renewal. So we're not quite out doing this yet. Um, we are waiting for reinsurance rates to come back as well, which will be uh, projected probably in May. None of the items that you, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just trying to get information. That's the point. Um, okay. Johansson's got a phone number up on the thing, and then I wanted to ask the city manager. We've got a process that we go through. This is just the very stuff to give us an overview of what we're going, and there'll be plenty of time for decisions and research uh, from here on. So if, if, if I may interrupt and ask the city manager to go ahead and go over with the yeah, Again, <clears throat> This item came up uh, the last time. This always comes up towards the end of our budget season in August. Obviously, we don't have the numbers to even give you, but I think the board then, when they got hit, um, you know, we had good years before that, when we got hit with a big increase, you wanted a little bit of preparation. You asked for this kind of mid, um, mid-term report and stuff. So we're just giving you information can be looked at. When we come back at budget time and during closer to renewals, they will have all the figures for you. They'll have all the this percents, this amount. They'll have all those. We're just giving you an introduction here per what you asked of what the process is, what they go through. Um, the firmer numbers will come when you're closer to renewal, and that's when the presentation will deal with it during the budget time and before the item comes up for selection. And that is kind of prep you some of the things we're looking at. We'll be examining, working with, with, with our partners um, to try to bring back you the best um, recommendations for coverage and stuff. So this is just preparation what we're going for. And a lot of the answers aren't here because we don't have all the numbers yet. Niffin also talked about is going to go through as well and give us some more specific yes. information as far as the details. But having said that, and I don't want to uh, kind of shortchange any commissioner if he's got any questions you, before I think that. you got to turn your mic on. Is your mic on? Excuse me. Thank you very much. No worries. Um, who can the vice or any commissioner call for getting additional information or questions answered? Is it Ms. start with Ms. Niffen or Ms. Johansson? Um, either you can get with Ms. Niffen and she can arrange the, the conference call or whatever, and we can arrange okay. that. All right. Um, having said that, uh, did you want to wrap up your comments or? I, I just had one more thing. Yeah. Is, this, is this FEMA that you're giving us or is this insurance? This is insurance. Okay. FEMA would be Additional. Separate. Additional, separate, excess. Right. Okay. That's it. Uh, Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, Vice Mayor Eisner. Are there any other uh, comments on this presentation? Just wanted to thank you all for the presentation. Thank you for walking every square inch of uh, every building here in Tarpon Springs, checking it out. And uh, this board is going to have to make a decision on uh, the couple different options that we have in the near future. So thank you. And we might have to consider uh, a special session or something. I mean, it's a big deal. So something for us Ooh. to think about. I'm sure if the Ms. Niffin's committee start walks away scratching their head, we're probably going to have to do that. So um, is there anybody else? Okay, thank you. One, uh, one final I, comment. Yeah. Um, this year will not be an increase anywhere near what you had last year. Um, basically, last year you consider it a, a market correction. The reinsurance market had to get right and get the rate that they needed in the state of Florida, or they were going to go, you know, they were, like she was saying, going to supplement going to either stop or limit capacity to the point where it would become uninsurable. So this is so that the reinsurers can get back. Um, they are definitely having a better year. Um, so we should not be seeing increases like this for a long time, hopefully. Okay. Ms. Niffin, anything else? No. We're all done. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you all for the presentation and look forward to seeing more of you in the future. <laughs> so. That ends our uh, presentations. Let's go to public comments. Are there any public comments? Good evening again, uh, Mayor David Ballard Geddes Jr. I live at Georgia Avenue in Palm Harbor. Again, in his farewell address, George Washington states that silence is being used to conceal or to clothe his zeal. Silence concealed in the secrecy clause of Article I, Section 5 of our current Constitution. George Washington makes reference to a uniform sacrifice seen as a uniform bankrupting silently secretly capturing both <laughs> land and water in article 1 section 8 clause 4 and 11 he claims to be of auspice and critical posture to be covert and insidious prudently enfeebling manifesting birthing local discriminations as of choice in reference to birthing despotic water jurisdictions under the 14th amendment he states to indirectly undermine that which cannot be directly overthrown from a religious perspective he states to have the same religion with slight shades of differences making reference to consequences requisite in light of the qualification requisite in Article 1, Section 2, which bases the 14th Amendment in the enumerating of individual independent water jurisdictions, tyrannical in nature, discriminating geographically, vanquishing Christianity, again, based on Federalist Paper 2. Recognizing his own criminal nature, Washington claims this Constitution <coughs> to be more of an experiment establishing particular districts in reference to the district not to exceed 10 miles square in article 1 section 8 clause 17 in such jurisdictional discriminating claiming that we are being given a useful lesson on our heads seen as a useful art in article 1 section 8 clause 8 he admits to his influence in misrepresentations to being destructive in nature, creating permanent infractions, having fatal tendencies to serving artificial factions in government, presuppositioned with a real design to control, claiming the right to further alter the former system of government, claiming that Hamilton's first constitution is intent on destroying the very engine which lifted it to its unjust domain, usurping the reins of government itself as a fundamental maxim of liberty, seen as a long train of usurpations. Again, in the Declaration of Independence, Washington claims that he is of greatest rankness and truly one's worst enemy, natural to dissension, multi-generationally propagated, here to perpetrate the most horrid of enormities seen as the absolute destruction of all ages and conditions in the Declaration of Independence. Again, George Washington and our founding fathers were warlocks. Washington was a slave trader engaged in sacrilege. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rocklin, thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, uh, Agency Heads, Department Chiefs, uh, Robert Rockline, 755 North Lake Boulevard. Uh, I want to start out by giving my thanks for uh, this uh, class number 10 of the Citizens Academy, uh, both the city clerks, staff, uh, Ms. Jacob herself, a lot of you uh, attended, a lot of the agency and department heads and their senior staff and their regular rank and file people all really gave a real feel for what goes on in here. Uh, I'm someone who was employed by municipalities for over 40 years, and you can teach an old dog new tricks, uh, believe it or not, because uh, I don't, still don't know what I don't know about certain things. So it was greatly appreciated. My wife had a great time, and she understands a little more about my prior and continued involvement with municipalities. Uh, I also wanted to thank the Public Works Department and whoever uh, authorize the, uh, the funding for an additional pair of stop signs at the T intersection of Mellon Street 
and Jasmine Avenue over by North Lake, over by the sports complex and Rose Cemetery and uh, the, uh, the regular cemetery over there. That's still a great cut through for people that want to bypass the intersection of 19 and Tarpon Avenue to get from Keystone, either to go north on 19 or the end of the day to bypass waiting for the light and cut through and get on Keystone going east. Um, it's, it's funny, I came upon an email and then I don't want to, uh, I don't want to get the, uh, the city manager in trouble, but it was about three years old where I asked because I knew there were other developments coming over there, the townhouses and then the little subdivision that I had asked for uh, a new stop sign and a new street sign, which was there, I think, within a week, if not, if not sooner. But I also asked for double yellow lines, the pavement demarcation, because there is a crest on Mellon Street that has zero availability until you're about 20 yards away from that crest, unless you're in a high truck or something like that. Uh, and I know there's plans coming for sidewalks over there and probably street redos on Jasmine, but Mellon Street is a blind spot. I see people come over that crest in the middle, daytime, nighttime. It's not everybody. It's probably about 5%, 10%, but it's just an accident waiting for happen because if you have people come each way and each one's 10 or 20% more to the middle than they should be, uh, I can't think of, of what would happen, but we just heard about the auto insurance and, and things like that. So uh, I ask if that could be revisited. I'm happy to, to resend uh, the communication I had with the city manager way back then. Uh, if that helps at all, but it's, I'm not talking about redoing the, the streets and the curbs and whatever else, just get something down there, maybe a couple of those uh, reflective demarcators as you get close to the crest to remind people, especially at night, because maybe they won't see the, the pavement markings unless they're ultra reflective, but anything that you can do to be preventative in this would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to say that? Yeah. Uh, city manager will take care of it, Mr. Rockland. Thank you. Katie Taylor, 1991, Douglas Lane, Tarpon Springs, Florida. I wanted to uh, first say uh, the Union Academy Neighborhood Revitalization Com Group wanted to thank y'all for the new sign at Dorset Park is beautiful, and so is the, um, the marker that you put up. So thank you again, and we're looking forward to enhancing more things at Dorset Park. And Chief Young, um, uh, Officer Boone did contact me about the, the, the street painting at Oakwood and uh, Live Oak and US 19, so he, he did communicate with me with, about that. And we look forward to working with Chief Young in the man, uh, emergency management to have a session for the hurricane at Mount Hermon. So we are trying to do things in our community and thank you for all your support and helping us getting things done. We appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Are there any other public comments? Evening, Peter Lacus 514 Ashland Avenue. And the reading for tonight is Isaiah 32, and the title is The Kingdom of Righteousness. See, a king will reign in righteousness, and rulers will rule with justice. Each man will be like a shelter from the wind and a refuge from the storm. Like streams of water in the desert, and the shadow of a great rock in a thirsty land. Then the eyes of those who see will no longer be closed, and the ears of those who hear will listen. The mind of the rash will know and understand, and the stammering tongue will be fluent and clear. No longer will the fool be called noble, nor the scoundrel be highly respected. For the fool speaks folly, his mind is busy with evil. He practices ungodliness and speaks error concerning the Lord. The hungry he leaves empty, and from the thirsty he withholds water. The scoundrel's methods are wicked. He makes up evil schemes to destroy the poor with lives, even when the plea of the needy is just. But the noble man makes noble plans, and by noble deeds he stands. So uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a quick story with the uh, way Mears Mango was closed and the way going eastbound, you had to basically turn it distant, but 
I didn't like turning into this and you had more traffic there. I always liked going up to North, and North's a pretty cool street. And lo and behold, three Habitat house for house, uh, Humanity houses are going in there. There's another one that's going in on MLK and another one that's on Lime Street. So I want to thank the city for following through on what we worked on years ago to allow these organizations to be able to purchase land at a reduced price based on what you probably could get in the open market. But we see we take steps to provide for our community. And the great thing about it is home ownership. It's not rental. They're going to have commitments there. And why do I bring this up? Because I was watching the end of the meeting last week from the CRA discussion. And I heard something that kind of caught my ear. Well, there was a commissioner a while back that wanted to vote against approving those sales because he wanted that the city to get more money, more money for him. And yet, at this meeting, he was arguing with the city manager. The city manager explained that this particular property on the corner of Orange and Alt-19 across from the church, the guy wanted too much money for the parking compared to what we're paying for other lease properties. And what is this commissioner who voted against helping people coming into this community? He said, no, we need you to work more with that guy. Work something out, work a deal. So I look it up, and lo and behold, turns out that commissioner has an office there. And that property was just tra uh, sold back on February 23 for $1.365 million. So what's going on? You rent there. My piece has been spoken. OK. Uh, are there any other public comments? Yes, sir. Yeah, David Black. Uh, 1709 Cromwell, recent grad of the Citizens Academy, and I want to thank everyone that was involved in that. It's an awesome program. Uh, I wouldn't be here if not for that. Um, I'm also uh, recently moved here about three years ago, semi-retired, joined the golf league, the golf course, and I understand their plans, hopefully, to renovate the, the clubhouse. Hope that happens, and I appreciate everybody. Okay, thank you. thank you. Are there any other public comments? Mr. Jump, are there any remote access comments? If anyone would like to make a public comment, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Thank you. Um, it's it's 7.38. We uh, don't have any ordinances or resolutions, so we're just going to continue on uh, with the agenda. And I'm going to ask uh, any of the commissioners, if you need to take a break, just flag me down. So um, we're going to go on with the special consent. Uh, are there any uh, commissioners that would like to uh, pull any of the uh, five items? No? OK. Uh, let me just read these, and, and um, five is special events. Um, 5A is Hurricane Preparedness Day and Sandbag Pickup Event. 5B is Tarpon Springs Splash Park 10th Anniversary Celebration. Number six is Award File Number 240092, Single Source Purchase of Hydrated Lime. Item seven is Increase File Number 230067, Single Source Purchase of Corrosion Inhibitor. Number eight is renewal file number 210092, purchase of work uniforms. And number nine is award file number 240100, single source purchase of citywide internet and related services. Um, are there any public comments on any of these? Mr. Jump, are there any remote access comments on any one of the five, uh, I'm sorry, consent agenda items? If anyone online would speak on these items, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. <clears throat> and 
and we do not have any raised hands at this time. Thank you. Are there any commission comments or questions on any of these? Okay. If I may have a motion to approve item uh, consent agenda items five through nine. So moved. Second. Uh, if there's no further comments, roll call, please. Yes. Commissioner Koulianis? Yes. Commissioner Koulias? Yes. Vice Mayor Eisner? Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis? Uh, yes. Um, special consent agenda. Item 10 is charter review appointment. Um, let me just um, get started on this. This was something that uh, we had planned for a while. The, um, the process we, we chose was to adopt the one that has been done for several times in the past where each commissioner would uh, provide two names. His first choice would be automatically on that commission. The commission uh, is seven members, so that would provide automatically five members. Then each commissioner would have a second um, name that would be his second choice. And then the uh, commission, if, if, there's, if there's none of the second choices that have more than one commissioner nominating them, um, then, and all of them are the same as they are here, um, then the commission is going to uh, choose from those five that have been made as second choices and select two of those. Last charter revision commission, it was, it was easy because we had the five first choices. I was four of um, four of the commissioner's second choice and one commissioner had a separate person as a, uh, as a separate choice and, and that made seven. Prior to that and the time before that, um, it was a little more like what you see this evening. So let me name the um, list of the, uh, at least the first five that were first choices. We have Dr. Carrie Root, and some of them are with us tonight. Dr. Carrie Root, Ms. Joan Jennings, uh, former commissioner Jim Colianis, Merle Seaman, he's the chairman of the Planning and Zoning Commission, and uh, former commissioner John Tierpani. Those are the four, four, five of the seven that we have that were commissioner's first choices. The second choices are um, Mr. Mike Cuscutis, who's also a member of the Planning and Zoning Commission, Dr. Tina Bukavales. Uh, Susan Cooper withdrew her name uh, earlier today. We have uh, former commissioner Peter Delacus and former mayor Anita Protos. Those are four of the um, second choices that we have. And then um, I'd asked um, Ms. Ms. Um, Jacobs if she could write down the, um, the process that has been gone through over and over again, uh, or at least for, let's say, the three or four past cycles on the Charter Revision Commission. And um, if, the committee, if the commission has no objections, um, I'd like to go ahead and adopt those, uh, that process that we've had. So is there any, any person that has an objection to this and we can have a discussion on it. You, you want to say something? Well, can you explain the... Uh, I'm going to explain it. Can yeah. you explain the process? So, so basically, um, we, I've gone through the first choice of how everybody got the five out of the seven. So um, on the second choice, when there isn't any that make, uh, that would make number six or seven, then each commissioner would go through and vote uh, on two of the four in this particular case. For example, um, I could vote on my second choice. I could vote on somebody else's second choice. I could vote on two separate choices, but then you're gonna have to have a little explanation on the guy that you, or the person that you voted as your second choice of why you didn't vote for them. And, um, it, it, and actually that's a little bit of a flexible uh, situation because as we, as we had earlier, uh, we had one of the second choices uh, withdraw their name. So I don't think that Commissioner uh, Kulia is gonna be voting <laughs> for his second choice. And, uh, but he gets two votes to vote for whoever else he wants on those four. And hopefully we can get um, um, a, 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 a some number of votes that two of them exceed the others. And then those two would be part of the, um, of the uh, seven members. If, if one has uh, a large number of votes that exceeds the others, then that person will be uh, a, a sixth member. And if there's ties on the seventh member, 
then we would have a, a, an, a, a, um, an election, a selection just the way I just described, except for one vote on that last uh, selection. So um, let me, um, is there any questions on that process? Commissioner Colmenares, okay. Um, let me go to public comment. Oh, Ms. Jacobs, do you have anything else you'd like to add to this? Could you explain it? I, I just wanted to kind of roll things along here for this one. Um, are there any public comments on this item? I'm Dr. Carrie Root of 1061 South Point Alexis Drive here in Tarpon Springs. Um, I just wanted to share with you uh, a big thank you for allowing your process, uh, allowing me to be able to serve the city in this capacity again. I was on the last Charter Review Commission. It was an education in how city government works of the like I've never experienced before. I really, really am looking forward to working with the, um, the commission that you put together to do this again. I think of what happened in the last five years in my life, I've experienced a global pandemic. I've moved. Both of my daughters have gotten married. And as of last month, I became a grandmother for the first time. Um, tragic things and wonderful things. But the bottom line is life does not stand still for me, for you, or for a city. So we have a really important job over the next several months to construct the recommendations for the next five years of our charter. It's a very important job. <coughs> and please give us a really good team. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Here, Lacus 514 Ashland Avenue very qualified group up there. Me, Anita, Mike Cuscutus, and Tina. Really can't go wrong with any of us. We all have governmental experience working with groups. Uh, I just would like to say that uh, I would consider it an honor to take a place on this board to help shape some of our future direction going forward in the city. Um, I don't think necessarily that we need to overhaul uh, our charter. There's a lot of good protections in there, but I think there are some new things we need to need to add or, or just adjust. Um, you know me. <laughs> I'm here almost as many meetings as y'all. And if I'm not here, I listen in or watch a meeting or call in. Um, so I just would like to say, I would like an opportunity to serve on this board and bring my experience, knowledge, and uh, morals and ethics towards keeping Tarpon the place that it is. You know, we do have, <laughs> sometimes we take things for granted. You know, I think about this, you know, quite a bit. We have a full service city here. We have rec departments, we have parks, we have libraries, we have our own water treatment plant, our sewer plant, we have our own police, our fire department, all these things that we are self-sufficient in basically. So we just need to make sure we protect those and yet still look at ways to go forward so we don't get overrun by what's coming down the pike. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? Mr. Geddes. David Ballard Geddes Jr., uh, Georgia Avenue in Palm Harbor. I try my best to attend a lot of Pinellas County uh, charter uh, review meetings, and they're currently meeting. Um, they do that, I think, every seven years, five years or something. Um, Section 2.04Q of Pinellas County Home Rule Charter mentions a transfer of power and function. 
Um, in effect, that in my mind would be a political usurpation in an attempt to privatize government, take it out of the hands of the public domain, place it into the private domain, and at that point, it would actually allow an establishment of a private judicial system, and uh, that would uh, that would in effect be usurping our current system of government, privatizing through some interlocal cooperation act, again, based on chapter 163 of the Florida State Statutes, that interlocal cooperation act of 1969, I call into question as a, uh, as a uh, privatization scheme and um, usurpation process. We need to be aware of that. And I would caution against moving forward um, uh, without solid counsel on, on how to uh, proceed politically in that that theater thank you okay thank you okay um any other public comments uh mr jump any remote access comments <clears throat> if anyone online would like to make a public comment on this item please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk and we do not have any raised hands at this time okay thank you uh, let's go on to the uh, voting. We're going to do this by um, majority. Um, I'm sorry, by seniority. Um, Commissioner DiDonato, can I get your uh, two votes for the number two choices? Okay, it would be Anita Protos and Mike Cuscutis. Commissioner, I'm sorry, Mr. Cuscutis and, and former Mayor Anita Protos? Yes. Okay. Um, Commissioner Koulianis. So I got a toss up here. Well, obviously I'm picking my choice of Peter Talakis. Um, you know, I was, I was been thinking about it all day between uh, Mike Kuskudis and um, Mayor Protus. And um, even though Mike Kuskutis could drop a weight on me tomorrow since I go to the gym with him. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with Anita Protus because the fact that, um, and please don't take this the wrong way, but she wants to step up one more time for her city. Uh, I think we should take advantage of that. So I'm for Anita. Okay, uh, Commissioner Kulias, you've got the, uh, Two open votes. Well, I was going to select my first, uh, my second appointment, which was Miss Susie Cooper, but she did send in a letter that she withdrew because she was ridiculed by a planning and zoning member. And, uh, you know, that's just, it, it's unprofessional. When you got people who want to volunteer their time and, and to help out this city, I mean, the lady was a paralegal for 35 years, uh, very experienced, and she had more experience than the individual who criticized her. So, you know, it's just, it's unfortunate, but you know, it, it seems to be a tactic lately. And so I just want to get that out. And I want to thank you for volunteering initially, but I'm going to select Mr. Kuskutis and Mrs. Bukuvalis. I think it's a, it's a good mixture. I think we've already got some prior board experience up there. We got some good, strong, uh, opinionated individuals as well, and uh, I think have an attorney up there and someone who's uh, interested, in, you know, who's been involved so, should be should be in that as well. So that was Mr. Cuscutis and, and uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. Bukovalis? Yes. I got it, thank you. Is there anything else? That's it. Okay, uh, Vice Mayor Eisner. I'm gonna <clears throat> replicate what Commissioner Kulas just said. So it's a second vote for both. And I'm going to go ahead and um, um, so you said Mr. Kuskutis? Mr. Kuskutis. Of course, uh, Dr. Bukovalis. Correct. All right, I'm going to vote for uh, uh, obviously Mr. Kuskutis and then uh, Dr. Bukovalis. Um, Ms. Jacobs, did, did you keep a tally of that? I did. Um, the, Do you want to announce who that'll be? Um, Mr. Cascudas had four votes. Um, uh, Tina Bukovalis had three. Uh, former Commissioner Delacas had one, and former Mayor Potus had two. 
So the two uh, finalists would be Mr. Cuscutis and Dr. Bukavalas? That is correct. Okay, so um, the seven members of the Charter Revision Commission are Dr. Curry Root, Ms. Joan Jennings, former Commissioner Jim Colianis, uh, Planning and Zoning Committee Chairman Mr. Merlin Seaman, former Commissioner John Terrapani, uh, Mr. Mike Cuscutis, who's also a member of the Planning and Zoning Commission, and Dr. Tina Bukavalis, who uh, has had a lot of activity in the uh, Greektown uh, Heritage District development. I want to congratulate you. And, um, and um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Ms. Jacobs, you'll be getting in touch with each of them to set up the first meeting. And is that when the swearing in will take place? That is correct. OK, so your swearing in will be uh, take place the very first meeting. <laughs> Um, I think that right now there's about 20 to 23, 24 weeks of which you can meet. That's going to be solely up to you as far as what your schedule is. And, um, and I think that uh, rather than getting into more details, all the, the dates and everything of when the, co the Charter Commission is going to have to report out is going to be determined in order to give this commission enough time to go over those recommendations for charter changes develop the language, ballot language that was approved for those, and then uh, communicate with the supervisor elections for placing it on the March election. 25th. I don't want to say the day. Is it March 20th? March, March, 4th. Uh, March 25th, I believe. March 25th election. OK, all right. So um, thank you all for the ones that are here this evening. And if any members that are listening in are here, have any questions, please uh, contact Ms. Jacobs. Thank you. Excuse me. Did I miss anything? Um, no, but if we can do a motion to that effect. We would have to do that, point. right. OK, so. So moved. <laughs> I have to do the hard work now. All right. Um, I'm just going to do all seven at one time, rather than the, f the five and then the seven. Um, I'm going to um, have a motion to appoint Dr. Kerry Root um, Ms. Joan Jennings, former Commissioner Jim Colianis, uh, Planning and Zoning Commissioner Merlin Seaman, former Commissioner John Terrapani, and uh, Mr. Mike Cuscutis, and also Dr. Bukavalis as our Charter Revision Commission. We have a motion to that effect and a no second. Move. Is there a second? So moved. Okay. Um, there's no comments. Any comments? Okay. Roll call, please. Commissioner DiDonato? Yes. Commissioner Koulianis? Yes. Commissioner Koulias? Yes. Vice Mayor Eisner? Yes. Mayor Vaticiotis? Yes. Does that do it, Ms. Jacobs? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, let's see. Okay. Item 11, Internal Audit, um, Public Works, Roads, and Streets Division. Mr. Poulos, nice to see you. <laughs> Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners. Good evening. Uh, it's nice to see you as well, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I actually have some good news for y'all for for a change, <laughs> and uh, I, I won't I won't be up here long. I don't I don't have too much too much to say. Uh, the audit uh, number 07-2024 of the Public Works, Roads, and Streets uh, Division, which is a uh, uh, obviously, the Division of the Public Works Department uh, just completed it a couple weeks ago. There was only one finding and, and seven observations, findings being, you know, usually negative things and observations usually being being positive things. Uh, for, from, from a high level, uh, it was pretty much, there were three objectives to the audit, and it was two parts, uh, compliance, one part, performance audit. Uh, the, com the compliance uh, portion of it was uh, the sidewalk improvement program and the annual street resurfacing program. And the performance part of the audit was the, uh, uh, looked at uh, fixing potholes and how, how long they take compared to other jurisdictions of you know, similar size. So the, the sidewalk improvement program is, is basically, it's a biannual program. It's funded every year. Uh, and it's, you know, it's in the county or in the city charter and in, there's some uh, city ordinances to that effect. So I kind of combined those and I came up with a list of, of compliance items and, and uh, the, the division meets all those. 
So it's, it's funded every year, but the, the projects are done every two years, so biannually, if you will, which, which at first didn't make sense to me, but after it was explained to me, it made, it made a lot of sense. So you, you save up the money in year one and year two, and then you do the projects in, in year two, and then year three, you save the money, and then year four, you know, you save the money, and then you, you spend it in year four. So it's saved every two years, spent every, every other year. Um, it's easier to, to get vendors when you have more projects and more dollars, and it's less. It's, there's less of an impact to, to the uh, to the to the city when the projects are done at one time instead of being done every year. So once every two years is less of an impact than once every year. Uh, so I didn't see I didn't see any issues issues with that at all. Then I looked at the annual. Uh, street resurfacing program, which is really a an alternating street resurfacing and street reconstruction program, where one year they'll do street resurfacing, which is uh, less intense and less uh, expensive than street recon uh, street reconstruction. So one year they do street repaving, the next year they do reconstruction. Reconstruction uh, involves uh, uh, if it's a brick street, obviously repaving, re replacing the bricks. And, and it's the underlayment as well, not just, not just the surface area. So I looked at both of those and I looked at for allowable expenses because both they're both funded by the local option uh, gas tax and the reconstruction program is also funded by the, the local option uh, sales tax. And I didn't see any issues with either one of those. Um, and the last part, so th that was the, 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 the compliance portion of the audit and the third part of the audit was, and I'm just kind of going through it quickly because there, there really wasn't there really wasn't any findings except one with potholes. Uh, the third part was looking at potholes and looking at their, our, the city's performance against other other comparable jurisdictions. And I found that there's no real there's no real standard for 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 fix, fixing potholes nationwide, and I found that other comparable jurisdictions had about a 15 day window when they from when they start the they put the work order in until it's till it's completed, and we're at 7.8 days, so a little over a week, and that's including holidays and weekends. So that's that's better than that's better than half of the average. So that that's really good, uh, but more importantly. When they were, when they, from when they start a pothole to the time they fix it, it's uh, so they put the work order in and say it takes five days. On the fifth day, they start it, and they also they all the ones I tested were completed the same day. So that's a good thing. So the, you you don't have projects lingering and you know traffic being held up and those types of things. Things. Uh, the only the only issue I found was closing out the work orders took uh, I think it was 56 days if if I can remember right. <laughs> Excuse me. And which is a little long, but that that's just an administrative thing. Uh, the, the point is, they're fixing potholes, they're repaving streets when you know, and um, and they're 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 uh, in compliance with the the charter and the ordinances when it comes to the sidewalk improvement program. Um, more importantly than that, though, I need I need to back up. I forgot to add this. Um, they have a rating system, which I really like, because the first thing I thought when I when I think of think of these programs was like, okay, well, how are you deciding where to spend those dollars? You know, are you just putting them in the touristy areas or the ritzy areas? Where are you where where are you where are you uh, spending the sidewalk dollars? Where are you spending the street resurfacing dollars? And they for both the sidewalk improvement program and the the street resurfacing programs, they have a, a really comprehensive and objective rating system for both of those. And that's important for two reasons. Number one, you all vote on these projects, so you need to have assurance that that these projects that are before you are are have been vetted and they're they're they've been uh, uh, vetted and they're 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 appropriate and not and 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 second of all that the dollars are being spread out equitably throughout the city, not just you know the sponge docks or or downtown or wherever. So I, I thought that was I thought I gave them credit for that in, in the audit as well. So like I said, there's only um, one small administrative finding concerning potholes. Um, everything else looked good. It was actually a pretty easy audit to do and um, it's uh, Tony's second audit actually <laughs> that I've done with him and and uh, he's he's had two really good audits so very impressive he's done a done a really good job if you have any questions I'd be happy to answer them okay um, what we're gonna do is go to public comments but I'm gonna ask city manager do you want to say anything or maybe Tony or anything like that no we both I think the auditor okay. for the report and it's a good good audit yes we're happy okay. with it. Um, 
Mr. Poulos, let me go to the public sure. comments first. Are there any public comments on this item? This is a, an audit of the Public Works Department. Uh, Mr. Jump, are there any remote access comments? Anyone online would like to make a public comment on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's go to the commission. Um, Mr. Poulos, I, I, you know, it was an excellent audit. Um, I, I know the, the Public Works works hard once they get the information that they of what they need to do, and um, and, and they do that. Um, and I also am familiar with some of the personnel issues that have occurred that have prevented some of the administration to be uh, completed in a timely fashion. I, I, I appreciate you pointing that out as well. I would like to be critical of something, sure. <laughs> but I, I I can't. I think um, you don't have any recommendations for anything. And uh, Mr. Manello, congratulations. Uh, you, this is one of the few meetings uh, <laughs> that you can experience this, and uh, but but you earned it. So you and the Public Works Department have earned it. So let me go to any of the other commissioners, uh, anybody else. Vice Mayor Eisner. I want to thank you. I read the report. Excellent. Um, you know, but you have to understand it's Tony who's handling some of the paperwork, so that's why it's 58 days. Um, you know, uh, the, other, the, the other thing is, you see, if you wear the same color shirt as me, Tony, you know that Every you're going to go places. That's all. <laughs> this is just a private joke between us. I congratulate you. You know that. Love you dearly. I know that you work hard. And, you know, this, this just goes to show you, you know, that, you know, you really do a good job. And that guy you work for, what's his name, Tom? He's, uh, he's okay, too, you know? So, thank you. He was nice enough to allow me to be here tonight and uh, be golfing. There you go. <laughs> thank you. Um, Commissioner Koulianis. Thank you, Mr. Poulos. Um, so, you know, it's, I, I, I love to go into your office and see, he, he um, you know, the, the auditing this kind of stuff is different than, you know, financial statement auditing, right? Which is very systematic and methodical. This is um, imagination in a lot of cases. So I, I see what, he has this whiteboard and he starts storyboarding all this stuff and he's got all these flow charts and I'm looking at it and he's got this connected to this and I'm gonna check this and then I check that, I'm gonna check that. And uh, so anyways, I'm in awe when I come, go in your, your office and, and see your... Yeah, that, that's actually the hardest part is trying to figure out, uh, understanding a, a department or a program, whatever it is you're auditing and then figuring out, okay, what am I gonna audit? That's, that's actually the hardest part of it. Yeah, you know? it is. That's probably half the time right there. Because it's not like, you don't have a, a grid that you can go to and say, okay, this is exactly how you audit a, uh, a public, you know, public works or how you audit a, a street thing or how you do this. You have to kind of sit down and create this whole. Right. Right. They're all like one, every audit's one, it's a one-off audit. It's kind of yeah. like, you know, uh, building a car, you know, rather as opposed to an assembly line where yeah. you're building 40 of the same car. So that's, Anyways. yeah, they're all unique in other words. Yes. I, li I like it. So you do a good job. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Uh, Commissioner Cuyas? No comments, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Di Donato. Thank you both. Very All right, thank you both. Thank you for the audit. I, thank you. I, I would just like to take a moment to um, it, just express how well it was, how great it was working with Billy. Um, I did throw a lot at him for that storyboard. <laughs> we do have many moving parts. Um, we we're fortunate, just fortunate to just complete a stormwater audit a few months ago. <clears throat> Very, a little more complex even than streets. And um, I, I believe our our system we have in place there, uh, which is overseen by the DEP up in Tallahassee, a lot of auditing, uh, accountability, and tracking, and, and all that. We've instituted those programs and those concepts into our street department. Um, it, it helps us be a lot more productive without spinning our wheels. Um, <clears throat> I do want to thank you for the kind words, and, and Billy, for the report. We, we, we were on the phone uh, quite a bit. Uh, it does mean a lot to not only myself, but my staff out there sweating every day, and and almost getting run over and hearing things they hear, this, this means a lot to us. We want to, all my guys, my guys and myself, and, and of course, Tom, who can't be here, we want to thank you. Thank you. Um, I think what we need to do is go ahead and have a motion in a, in a second to accept the, the audit 
results. I know there's no recommendation, so I have a motion and a second to that effect. So moved. Second. Uh, no further comments. Roll call, please. Commissioner DiDonato? Yes. Commissioner Koulianis? Yes. Commissioner Koulias? Yes. Vice Mayor Eisner? Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis? Yes. Okay, thank you. Item 12 is the appointment to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. We had uh, two resignations and we've got two um, applicants, uh, Ms. Day and Mr. Clunan, um, that are being recommended for appointment. Um, is there anything more that you want to say about that, City Manager? Oh, it's your game, yeah. Nothing, okay. Thank you. It's a simple one. Um, any uh, public comments on this item? Uh, okay, uh, Commissioner comments, anything? All right, I need a motion to appoint uh, Ms. Day and Mr. Clunan. I think it's Ms. Juliana Day, and I think it's Mr. Mike Clunan, if I got that right. Okay, yeah, uh, in a second. So moved. Second. Second, okay, roll call, please. Commissioner DiDonato? Yes. Commissioner Koulianis? Yes. Commissioner Kulyas? Yes. Vice Mayor Eisner? Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis? Yes. Okay, item 13, approval for advertising selection for next city manager. Um, okay, city manager, of course, you, you went and did your homework. You made some updates. Did you want to go ahead and discuss everything? Yes, and I, I want to thank, uh, I don't know, uh, Jane was staying around, but I'll go ahead and uh, I want to thank Jane Niffin and Paul Smith who extensively went through and uh, and uh, to update both the the brochure and the advertisement from the last time we did. They've updated it. Jane has already secured um, the dates of publishing. If we approve it tonight, tomorrow she will be getting it um, to the International City Manager, the Florida City Manager. They're all set, and hopefully within three to four days they'll be advertised, which meets the window. Um, the ending is, is before the meeting. Remember in May we changed the meetings because of the Grief Sister City trip. So, so that ending time of the advertisement is perfect before our meeting in May. So we'll know how many applicants and be able to move on with the rest of our processes so the timing works out. Would that be the second meeting in May? Yes. Or okay. Yes. Right. So, so the timing works out. Um, remember we have, we have a wide split. We have the 7th of May and then the 28th of May because of the grief trip. So it works out that that advertising period for, for the reviews. Um, so we'll be on that 28th uh, agenda um, for us to talk about moving forward from there. So the timing works out. The advertising has already been set up to go by Ms. Niffin. Um, the, uh, the recruitment ad, the brochure is ready to go and uh, looks good. And, We'll be in the running with the four other cities in Pinellas County that is looking for city managers. They're, they're so. going to get them as well, right? The <laughs> cities? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, let me go to public comments. So, are there any public comments on this item? This is advertising for uh, the new city manager. Mr. Uh, Mr. LaCourse's term ends um, January 1st, 2025. Um, Mr. Jump, are there any remote access comments? Anyone online would like to make a public comment on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay, does the commission have any questions or comments for uh, City Manager LaCourse on, on any of these two items? If not, uh, may I have a motion to uh, authorize, uh, to accept the, um, uh, advertisement and the brochure and to authorize the city manager to go out to advertising for his replacement. So move. Oh, so move. Okay, yes. We have second. a first and a second. I'm going to assume that's the case. Okay. Did you second it? I did. Okay. Yeah. Roll call, please. Yes. Your microphone. Yes. Commissioner Kouliass? Yes. Vice Mayor Eisner? Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis? Yes. <clears throat> okay, item 14, um, discussion and direction um, concerning the uh, city manager. Um, I'm not going to go into details. Uh, it's in the backup as far as uh, Ms. Kardash, and uh, I've already stated what I needed to say at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, Mr. Daniel Lewis will be here for some interim period to be determined, 
And uh, city manager, of course, I'm going to ask you if you'd like to make any comments on this. Yes. Um, obviously, we learned this uh, Thursday afternoon. So we immediately put an addendum on there, but we didn't have much time to do it. So there, there'll be this item to update you, and there'll probably be another item on the next meeting with a little more detail. And I'll have Mr. Lewis talk about that. But we were able to have a meeting Monday with Mr. Lewis and Mr. Salzman. Um, our goal, as I told you in the memo, was to make sure the next two months was taken care of meeting-wise situations. I'm working with all the staff right now to get the outstanding items. Um, again, I want to thank Mr. Lewis and his firm. They are with us to get through this process and offered every resource that they have available to do this until during the transition period. So, so I'm very happy. And in that short meeting on Monday, um, we're working on getting everything set prioritizing our issues that we got outstanding, dividing them up, trying to move along, move forward and not move backwards. So, so we've had three days on it. We got a couple more weeks. Uh, we'll come back to you with some processes, some looking at the contract. I think Mr. Lewis will go, we'll be looking at all of those things and back, bring back to you. But the good news that I hope to bring you when I put this item on is uh, we're set for the next two months and we'll be moving forward, I think, without a without a hitch, and I'll ask Mr. Lewis to talk a little bit uh, from our meeting. Yes, uh, so again, as uh, Mr. Glucoris was able to say, I, uh, myself, uh, Mr. Glucoris, and uh, Andy Salzman, the other city attorney, uh, did meet yesterday to discuss short term, to make sure that the city um, has all its legal needs met. Um, and I can assure you that my firm's dedication is that that it's a, that's the fact. You got me if you're, for the short term. You got me. Um, I will be here um, for these Tuesday meetings, um, at least obviously he, this month, next month, and as long as truthfully it, we need to transition to another attorney. Unfortunately, with Miss Kardashian's uh, uh, resignation, it's it's work crunch on my firm, and we she was she lived the most northern of all of us. I live in Sarasota County, so it's something of a just logistics issue on my end. But um, I am not here to have you all lose the legal work that you need, need to get done. To that effect, I have, I met, I did office hours yesterday. I was able to uh, met with several of the department heads, um, just discuss issues that are up. I have a stack of work that I am working on. Um, I'm going to be, and uh, Mr. Salzman and I, to beat up the uh, upcoming meetings through this month, next month, and if need be, June. So uh, all the meetings will be covered, work will be completed, and my goal, even, not only my firm's goal, but my own goal, is that it's a seamless transition to, uh, for, to a new attorney to provide you, a, and again, maybe end up working with you all in the future, but. I want this to be a seamless transition so that there's no un, there's no interrupted service. Thank you. Are there any other uh, city manager, of course, anything else? No. Okay, let me go to public comments. Are there any public comments on this item? Mr. Chump, are there any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to make a public comment on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do have a raised hand. I'll allow the first person in. Okay. If you can state your name and address for the record. Stephen Lack is 514 Ashland Avenue. Uh, it's sad to see Ms. Kardash going. I have to say she's the best attorney we've had since John Hubbard. But needless to say, we now need to proceed forward. I appreciate the services of Mr. Saltzman and Ms. Kardash's firm to continue representing us through this time. And I know we'll need to put out a bid for attorney services. But I would like to bring up another option that has been considered in the past, and I know it's been suggested it's not economically feasible, but maybe it's time we set up our own legal department, hire a paralegal and an attorney, and then we have a, a dedicated city attorney dedicated just to the issues department. So it's just a thought, but... Uh, Hope we uh, are able to move forward with good attorney services that will represent the board in the equitable fashion. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else, Mr. Chum? 
and we do not have any other race. Okay. Um, uh, I'm not going to ask any questions. I, I know that there's a, a long list of things that Ms. Kardashian has been working on for Ms. Jacobs, yourself, the departments, and and um, and I assume that's going to be part of what you're discussing right now. Is that yes. correct? Okay. Yes. Uh, do any of the other commissioners have any comments or questions? Yes, Commissioner Pulianis. Yeah, I just want to uh, thank uh, Ms. Kardashian for all she did for our city. I mean, she she came to the Planning and Zoning Board as our attorney at a time when we needed her desperately. Um, she brought stability to our Planning and Zoning Board. Um, she brought that same professionalism over to the Board of Commissioners. Um, and I was uh, I wish her all the best in what she does in, in her life and um, want to thank her for what she's done for our city. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> I just want to second what Commissioner Kulianis just said. Um, she was a very good person and I wish her all the best. Um, we probably will miss her. She's uh, been one of the best attorneys we had and I just want to thank her for all that she's done. And I hope that all that you'll go through <clears throat> from here on in will be just good wishes and best of health and everything else that goes with that. So thank you. And Mr. Lewis, this was an easy one you got off on today. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> um, I, I would like to echo, I had a much shorter time to work with Ms. Kardash. Um, however, I was able to watch many meetings and watched how she handled matters and I can only commend her and uh, wish her well. Thank you. Commissioner Krios, you got anything? Yeah, I wish her the best, and uh, I just want to follow up. Are we going to still continue to have the first and third Tuesday meetings when we go out for bid? And Okay. I just want to keep it that way, and uh, I am looking for it sometime as we transition out another city attorney to handle our regular session meetings and, and all that stuff besides Attorney Salzman. Thank you. I was going to say my comments for board staff, but, uh, you know, Ms. Kardash was a breath of fresh air. Uh, she raised the bar on our legal representation here at the city. She showed us things that we should have done a long time ago to protect the city, and we had not. That goes for the PNZ board and also um, and, and uh, for the commission as well. And also, um, I, uh, as I understand, we had a, a combination of Ms. Kardash representing the city at Code Enforcement Board and uh, Mr. Salzman representing the staff or the Code Enforcement Officer, which I think was something new. Is that correct, the way we did that? Yes. Yeah, so uh, just all the way around, things were operating differently than we had done in the past, and, and I think her advice to us and, and um, making some provisions uh, in the case of emergencies were, again, a breath of fresh air for me. She's going to be missed. Um, Mr. Lewis, good luck. I know you're going to do your best in this, and, and there's a lot on the table, and, and uh, hopefully we'll get some of these things done the next, next couple of months. So um, I wish Ms. Kardashian all the best in the future. I hope, actually, I hope to see her back. <laughs> so um, in any case, uh, that's all I have on that particular item. Um, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing further, no action. You're just going to come back to us the second meeting of May. Yeah, no, uh, we'll no, be back no, the next no, meeting. Next okay. meeting. Okay. Next meeting. Got it. Got it. Okay. All right. Uh, that ends the agenda, unless I'm missing something at 823. Uh, let me go to board and staff comments. Um, Chief Young. Uh, no comments. Sir. Um, Mr. Lewis. No comments at this time. City manager Corris. Yes, I just want you to prepare. Also, at the next meeting, we'll probably have information from Mr. Salzman of the need for a shade meeting on the Trass Danielle case. So, if you would look for me um, from the 17th of April to that the rest of that week and the week of the 22nd, if we, you would look for me and let me know ahead of time if there are bad days um, to set this up. Um, just call me or send me an email of bad days. We won't know exactly until the 16th when he's looking for, but it'll probably be sometime uh, the re 
rest of the week of the 16th or the week of the 22nd that we'll have a, a shade meeting. Um, so just let me know if there's some bad dates or you're gone so I can eliminate those when we're looking at a time to have the meeting. That's all. Okay. Um, Commissioner DiDonato, do you have anything? I do not. Commissioner Kulianos. So the, uh, the agenda says that we're estimated time to adjourn is 9 10. Uh, so you want to talk a while? No, so no, we got, <laughs> he wants to stay <laughs> till the <laughs> end. <laughs> Mayor, you know, you get a blame for a lot of things, so you got to get credit when credit's due. <laughs> you got to stop 45 minutes early. Congratulations. I've got nothing to do with this. It's all up to you and how much talking y'all want to do. So um, I, it's not the residents either. Look at them. They're all sitting there nice and peacefully. It's all us. So thank you, Commissioner Koulianis. Um What are you looking at? If I, say, <laughs> I have nothing right, to say. You'll have your chance. Commissioner Koulianis. Oh, I just want to... Um thank everyone for being here with the, with the library presentation, but I also wanted to follow up. There were some, uh, some comments made by Mr. Delacos, and I want to be firm when we talk about, you know, he had mentioned Habitat for Humanity. Uh, those were properties that were owned by Tarpon Springs residents, and some of those properties were hundreds, tens of thousands, if not about $100,000. So they were sold for pennies on those. So we were asking for fair value for them, because those were Tarpon-owned families, but they have been displaced from that property. So yeah, if a well-funded organization, I want them to pay a fair amount for a property in town. That's nothing more, nothing less. As far as the parking lot, that wasn't even an issue for us to be voting on or recusing ourselves on, but uh, he must have select enforcement as he forgot when another commissioner should have recently recused himself from a vote. So, but that's, that's gonna be the antics coming up and all along, but the residents of Tarpon Springs will see through that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Eisner, your turn. Uh, no comment. <laughs> All right. Um, actually, I, um, um, we, we've had a, um, um, a good week with some uh, police department uh, new officer being sworn in, and, and we've got two new recruits uh, going into the, uh, um, uh, into the academy that are going to come back to us. Um, We've had some um, just kind of a peaceful time. I'm hoping it continues. And uh, we're going to have some weather tomorrow afternoon. And I've also have a uh, meeting with uh, County Commissioner Scott uh, concerning historic preservation. And I should have mentioned that uh, Dr. Bukavalis is also on the Pinellas County Heritage, uh, Historic Preservation Board as well. She's a voting member of that board. So uh, they'll be coming to town, um, and I think uh, Vice, we, we needed a couple of representatives um, at that luncheon. I couldn't invite any of you because of sunshine rules, but uh, former Vice Mayor Lunt will be at that uh, luncheon along with um, one or two other uh, people in the community. So I'm looking forward to that, and uh, hopefully we can miss the weather on that. Anyway, I, I wanna congratulate this commission, not all kidding aside, Tonight went really, really smooth on some really challenging items that um, I, I really appreciated everybody's cooperation on that. So uh, thank you all and, and uh, meeting adjourned at 828.